Hello, my name is Kishwani. It's K E S H W A N I, Kishwani. We are here because we want to improve our English. We want to improve our vocabulary. Today is uh, our day number 34. Let's see what we have for today. The very first word that we want to learn today is it may be a very simple word for a native speaker but I want to learn it myself. So here it is. Retort. What does it mean to retort? It's a word. It means to talk back. For example, if a, for example, if a parent is talking to a child and the parent says something and the child talks back, the parent might say to the child, do not retort. It just means to talk back. One does not retort to one's parents, to one's elder, one does not retort to a teacher. It just simply means to talk back. It means to reply in a quick and correct manner. Or to put it in a simpler term, it just means to talk back to somebody. It also means to present, to present, or to make a counter argument. If somebody argues something, and you retort to it, you answer back to it, and by presenting a counter argument, an argument that uh, opposes their argument, that was counter mean counter means opposite. That's where the word counter, counter argument, counter as in opposite, as in counterclockwise. You have a clockwise, you can go clockwise, or you can go counterclockwise. Counter means opposite, counterclockwise or anticlockwise. So, to present or to make a counter argument means retort. That's it. That was the end of that part. Let's move on to the next word. That's it. We're done with it. The word was retort. To talk back, to reply in a quick and direct manner, to make a counter argument. The next word that we want to learn is vernacular. Vernacular. Vernacular is a special language, a special lingo, a special way of speaking for a certain group of people. It's a special language of a, I don't like this color, of a particular people or a region or a profession. The word is vernacular. Each each profession each profession has its own language. For example, if the two plumbers are talking to some uh, to each other about about some problem Unless you are a plumber, a lot of the things they're going to say you probably will not understand. If you take your car to a garage and if the two, two mechanics are discussing what is wrong with your car, most likely I will have no clue what they're talking about because they are using their own vernacular, their own lingo. You must have heard, for example, people talk about 
in legal vernacular or in legal in legal jargon so that's what it is uh, a vernacular is a special way of talking for a say, for a given group of people uh, every profession as i said uh, the two talk uh, the two doctors are talking to each other about what is wrong with you most likely there are a lot of words there are a lot of terminologies that you will not understand because they are employing their own vernacular it's a special language special lingo of a particular group of people a particular profession a particular region what have you let's learn this word jargon that's what i'm going to learn next that's it you need to raise this thing because i need the room the word is vernacular a special language of a particular people or a region or a profession Jargon is a synonym of vernacular. That's what it is. Jar. Okay. Jargon. It simply means it's a specialized or technical language of a trade or a profession as I already gave you the examples uh, different trades have their own language uh, all they have their own languages uh, as I already gave you the example of what if the two mechanics are talking to each other about what is wrong with the car most likely I would not have a clue of what they're talking about uh, similarly if the two doctors are talking to each other unless you are uh, of a medical person yourself most likely they will use a lot of terms a lot of uh, 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 words that you would not understand because they are using their own jargon they are using their own vernacular both vernacular and jargon also mean and jargon also means something that is non-sensical makes no sense a meaningless talk that's the second meaning of the, both of the words jargon jargon could be a specialized language as a real language that is, that they means it means something to them people who are talking or it could also mean just a hollow talk it has no meaning it's nonsensical it's pure uh, boulder dash pure uh, what's the word I'm looking for? Oh, it's a pure nonsense. While we're talking about nonsense, while we're talking about nonsensical and nonsense, let's learn another word, which is a good word, which is a fun word to know. I don't know why I'm covering it. It's a fun word to know, which simply means nonsensical talk. Nonsensical talk, meaningless talk. Or simple, or simply nonsense, and the word is it's a real word. Trust me, the word is gobbledygook. Let's learn it, shall we? Let's learn this word on the top with the pronunciation and everything. So that was it. We are done with we are done with the word jargon and we are done with the word vernacular. Let's learn this word. This is a fun word. No, no, it's not a slang. It is not a slang. It's a real word. It's a real word. You will find it in the dictionary. It is spelled. It's spelled with two hyphens in it. 
double D group. It is also spelled with a DY. You can spell it with a DE or DY. Gobble the cook. Gobble the cook. It just means, as we, as we said a little while ago, it just means nonsense. Or nonsensical talk. meaningless talk. Meaningless talk. While while we are at it, I'm gonna digress. I'm gonna go off topic. Go off topic in the sense that we're talking about words which has to do with the speech and language. We're gonna talk about one word which does not have to do with which does not have to do with speech or language. And uh, a word that a lot of native speaker, if, you, if your first language happens to be English, you would know it. But if it's not, you might not know this word. The word that I want to cover right now, just purely out of curiosity, is this word. Gobble. Not gobble the gook, but just gobble. That's it, we're done with gobble the gook. It just means nonsense, nonsensical talk, meaningless talk, gibberish, if you like. A gibberish is gobbledygook. What does it mean to gobble? It just means to eat or to devour. Devour means to eat in a Greedy in a greedy manner. So if the food is put in front of you and instead of eating politely and nicely and taking your time to eat and chew properly, you just go. <laughs> That's called gobbling, gobbling it up. Okay. It gobble means to eat. voraciously or ravenously voraciously or ravenously which just means to eat in a greedy way voracious and ravenous have to do with greed you're being greedy you're eating everything together everything that is put in front of you you just gobble it up right away gobble it up you see gobble it up gobble to eat, to eat in a very greedy manner. These two words, voracious and ravenous, I will cover. I will cover these two words in the future, in our next lesson. All right, we will cover them in the next next lesson. Voracious and ravenous. That's it. We're done with it. The very last word that I want to cover, which has to do with retort, I sort of left it out in the beginning, so I'm going to cover it now. The word is it is related to retort, but not quite. You will see that in a second. There is a difference. Retort means simply means to talk back. You know, your parent says something to you, and you make a wise wise guy argument. You could talk back and make a wise guy argument. You're retorting. What is this word? How do you pronounce it first of all? It is pronounced repartee. Repartee. This, even though it has two in it, even though it ends in a two e, it's pronounced te at the end. Repartee. Or, if you like, it is also acceptable to pronounce it as re reparte ah re -ar -te. 
Red Party. Red Party. What does it mean? A Red Party is also a talking back, but it is when you talk back to somebody, somebody says something and you talk back to them just like a retort, except when you talk back, you're being witty, you're being funny. You say something funny and very quick and a quick reply, a swift and witty reply. It has to be witty, it has to be funny, otherwise it will not be a repartee, it will count as a retort. A swift and witty reply. It has to be witty, it has to be funny, otherwise it will not be a repartee. Let me give you a quick example of a, of a repartee if you, if you, if you like. Um, perhaps I should not, I should not go there. Uh, it just means a quick and a witty reply. Uh, to, to, to say something, to argue, uh, to, to say something back, and if it's not funny, if it's just you're just talking back to somebody, it's a retort, you're retorting. But if you talk back in a very witty and a very funny way, it's called a repartee. Do you understand? That was it. So it's related to retort. Which means to talk back. Here, it means to talk back but in a funny way. But it has to be witty and funny. That's it. That was the end. That was the end. That's all I have for today. Hopefully you found it uh, helpful. Uh, if you wish to get hold of me for personal private tutoring for GRE, GMAT, SAT or TOEFL, you can go to any of these websites. Prep for GRE.com, prep for GMAT.com or prep for SAT.com or prep for TOEFL.com and send me an email from there. Or you can simply go to KashmaniPrep.com and you can reach me from there as well. Okay. I provide tutoring for all of this uh, test uh, in person or through online through uh, via Skype or also over the phone. Alright, thanks.